Good afternoon. Hope you had a good lunch. Today I will be talking about the Gen2 Proxy Maintainers project, what it is and how you can contribute to Gen2 through the project. So, currently the package repository contains over 19,000 packages. And more than 1,500 of those packages have no maintainers. At one point, there was a developer who picked it up, maintained, decided not to do it anymore, so there are no maintainers. <clears throat> so there are a lot of users out there who have the technical knowledge and capability, and they're willing to maintain packages, but users are not allowed to commit directly to the Gen2 repository. So we have this potential, but we can't utilize it well. So Proxy Maintainers Project is specifically formed to take advantage of this potential. It's, a, it's just another Gen2 project, and the aim is to enable users maintain packages in the official repository. We do this mainly in two ways. One is acting as the primary responsible project. That is, the user sends us their contribution and we commit them on their behalf. The other one is acting as a backup when a user is working with another developer who is not a member of our project. This is typically used in cases where you have a developer that's skilled in a particular package, but they can use some user help. But they could be busy, so we act as a backup when they're busy. We take the user contribution, we evaluate, and we commit. We also try to provide technical support for users if they have any problems writing e-builds, even the source code itself. We provide technical support and documentation. We provide code reviews before they are committed to the repository, and we provide feedback so that it becomes a learning experience for the user, not just a boring task. And it's a good way to transition into applying to become a Gen2 developer. Myself, I have become a developer back in May. I was a proxy maintainer since 2011, and it's good practice to pick up packages take help from developers, solve the problems along the way, and get knowledge from it. And then it's really easy to transition into becoming a developer. So short statistics, currently our team, the gen proxy maintainers, consists of 18 developers. We are responsible for 321 users, and we maintain, the, these statistics are a day or two old. But currently, we maintain 833 packages in the tree. So these packages wouldn't have been actively maintained if it weren't for our project. This is a graph for the, the number of packages maintained by us versus the maintainer needed category, the, the, the category that has no active maintainers over the past 12 months. And as you can see, last year, about these days, we, the proxy maintainers project had about 600 packages. And over one year, the number went up to over 800. But if you compare that to maintainer needed, maintainer needed was around 1,200. And in one year, it went up to 1,600. So we are still behind. We are improving. There are more users. We are picking up more packages. But we are not catching up with maintainer needed. So we can always use extra help. So how to get involved with our project? Typically, for a new user, this is our workflow. You find a package to maintain. There are multiple ways to look for packages, which I'll go into. And then two things that we have recently added to our workflow that may not be known well, even for the developer community, is we will ask you to file a maintainership request bug, a maintainer bug, and then we will take your submission, we will evaluate, we will give you feedback on it, we will improve if it needs improvement, and then once it's approved, you will be responsible for the future for that package. So where to find packages to maintain? 
First list is the maintainer needed list, the one in the graph that's growing faster than we are adapting packages. The Gen2 QA team holds a list of maintainer needed packages. The link is below. So it's, it's a list of packages with open bugs. It would be really good if you can pick them up because nobody is maintaining them. The second lit list is maintainer wanted. This isn't exactly a list. Gen2 users are free to file bugs for packages that they would like to see in the official repository. So the second point is just a 4,000 bugs, rough over 4,000 bugs in Gen2 Bugzilla that users wanted to have the package in the repository, but no developer stepped up to maintain it. So if you're willing to pick a package from this list, feel free to. And the last one is a package that's already being maintained. Obviously, this is not free for all, but Sometimes it so happens that developers are busy, even though their names are in the maintainer list, they may not be paying enough attention and care to that package. My personal experience has been that if, you, if the package is lagging behind with updates and fixes, fix them and contact the developer. And most of the times, developers are accommodating. And in which case, this is one of those cases which the proxy maintainer's project would act as a backup. So you would have a, a maintainer that's busy and a user who is willing to help the package and the proxy maintainer's project who is willing to spend the time to do the QA reviews and commits. So once you have your package, we will ask you to file a maintainer request bug. This, is, this wasn't in our workflow before, like I mentioned. It's new. It acts as a central point to coordinate contributions. One of the reasons why we came up with this idea is when we have one package and then there are more than one users who are willing to maintain. And previously, the package assignments within the project were done in an ad hoc manner. So you would find a package and then you would contact a developer and ask the package to be assigned to you. If two different people contact two different developers and try to claim the package, then we have a problem. This bug helps us prevent that. So if you file the bug first, the other user will have to look for the bug and see that there's already a user willing to maintain. And then from then on, maybe you can coordinate and cooperate together to maintain the package. Anyone who wishes to claim a package to become a maintainer for it should file a maintainership request bug. Like I said, this is something that we've been progressively implement. It's not strictly mandatory, but we would like to see more people going this way. And it has a specific bug title, so it makes it easier to find. So the bug title starts with maintainership request, and then you add the category slash package name to the title. So I hope it's visible. Not so much, but this is an example maintainership request bug for the package spam assassin. As you can see, the maintainer uh, the, the bug title clearly states that it, it's for the package spam assassin. It's reported by the user who is willing to maintain the package. And it's assigned to the proxy maintainers team and relevant people are CC'd to it. So it just makes it easier to coordinate contributions. So the next one is the maintainer bug, which is separate from the maintainership request bug. The maintainer bug is used to track individual maintainers. This is also fairly new that we didn't do before. One of the problems that we want to solve with this method is that if a user claims a package and then decides to go AWOL, becomes unresponsive, it's really hard to track them down. It's easier for Gen2 developers because we have the dev away mechanism. So if you're away, you can easily set it up on the uh, Gen2 infra so they know why you're away, away for how long you're away. But that's not easily possible for users. The maintainer, one of the, the bonuses of the maintainer bug is that it establishes a bug that we can communicate with you and you can communicate with us. So if you're willing to go away, you're on a vacation, Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. You can you can comment on this maintainer bug, and then we will know. 
And it also allows us to ping you if we think that you are being unresponsive. It's also good that over time, this bug will include all your contributions. And if you decide to become a Gen2 developer, it, it shows good. It's almost like your track record of what packages you maintain for how long. So it's good to have it on your record during your recruitment. And this is an, an example maintainer bug. It's, again, visible. So the, uh, the bug title states with, starts with maintainer. And this is one of our active users in our IRC channel. It's reported by a developer. And for the maintainer bugs, sometimes users do it. But also, as developers, we would happily file maintainer bugs on your behalf, no problem. And then the bug is assigned to you. And then we are CC to the bug. And we use the depends on fields to map the individual package maintainer requests to the maintainer bugs. So you have a package that you're willing to maintain. You have filed a maintainership request bug. And if you don't already have one, you filed a maintainer bug. And if there already exists one, you have updated with the package, the new package that you're willing to maintain. The next one is submitting the actual contribution, because we would like to see evidence of some form of contribution before we say, there you go, have this package. It, it helps us see that you are more than willing to do this. You have evidence that you have the knowledge of the package. There are multiple ways which, in which you can submit your contribution. One is as an attachment to the maintainership request bug. This is, I would say, an older method before we had the Git transition and GitHub. So it could be you wrote an e-build. You can easily attach to the bug, and then we will pick it up and commit for you. It could be a, it could be in the form of a Git patch, and you can still export it using Git format patch and then attach it to your bug. Uh, one of the popular ways, I would say the most popular, is using pull requests on GitHub. And I've put the link on there if you want to check it out. This, compared to the other submission methods, this allows us easy reviews. Uh, previously, in, in the infra talk, there has been mention of implementing a submission review mechanism for Gen2. So GitHub currently serves as the review mechanism for us. But by no means, it's mandatory because it's closed source. So we will not force it upon anyone. It's just for your own sake if, if you think it's easier for you. The, there are two, three other methods that are not well utilized. But one of is emailing the project alias. This, that's one of the things that I've personally used before. Or we have a project mailing list now, which has open archives. So you can use git send email to send your patches to the mailing list, and we will pick it up. And if you don't like any of these, you can just email one of the developers and send it. So as long as you send your contribution in any form of shape, we'll take it. Write it on a piece of paper, take a picture, tweet to us, we'll take it. So upon the submission, one of the developers will go over the submission and provide any necessary feedback. And we will just keep doing this, send, update your submission, send it again, we'll review. If it's good, we're going to commit. If not, we're going to repeat it. So what really happens when you claim a package from the distro's perspective or from our perspective? We update the package's metadata, the metadata that the XML files in the, in the uh, package repository defines who the maintainers are for a given package. So we update it so that your name is listed first, followed by the proxy maintainers project. That sets that as you are the first maintainer of this package, which means you will be responsible for keeping the package up to date. If necessary, remove older version, remove vulnerable versions from the tree. And if there are any bugs associated with your package on Gen2 Bugzilla, we will assign it to you and expect that you will solve them in a professional manner. So once you're done with it, what's next is, like I mentioned, any future updates. 
you can use the previously mentioned methods, the attaching patches to Bugzilla, GitHub pull requests, emailing individual developers. Any future updates, you can utilize any of those. Um, the, I believe the, the default permissions on Bugzilla will let you close bugs if once they're assigned to you, but you will not be able to change status, bug status, something like in progress. And once you get comfortable with one package, though multi sometimes people take on multiple packages, but once you get comfortable, you can file additional maintainer bugs and take on more packages. But keep in mind that it's the, the workload may scale more than linearly. So if, if you have one more package, then you have not just the updates, but the bugs. So try not to go fast. And if you decide to cease maintainership, please, please, please contact us. Don't just become unresponsive and go away. We will nicely remove the package, we remove you from the package's metadata. Hopefully, somebody else will take it. So, uh, for quality assurance, so what makes a submission good? The, these points are good to make. It saves everybody time. So, if you follow these simple steps, we will have easier sub, uh, submission review process. So the e-build must pass the repomment checks. I'll come to this later. The submission should be run tested with different combination of use flags, which is one of the things people skip. So if your package supports multiple use flags, please, please it, turn on some of them and turn off some of them and see if it compiles. The, the dependencies should be accurately specified. This is a, there is no easy tool to accomplish this. You can use various tools like ScanElf, or you can read the source. But reading the source is, if you're comfortable with the source code, is, the, is a good way to go. And if, if it's in the form of git commits, it should follow the exact commit format that's, that's mentioned in the uh, dev manual. Each commit should contain a single logical change. That is to say, if you're, if you're touching multiple packages, first of all, it's a bad idea to combine them in, in a single commit. If you're doing multiple change to a single package, separate them into multiple commits. So if you're going to add a use flag, bump two versions, and remove old version, please don't do that in a single commit and try to separate them. And each commit should be repum and valid. That means if you submitted five commits, after applying each commit individually, the state of the tree should remain stable. Uh, one of the tools that we use for quality assurance is Repomend. That's, that's one of the most valuable tools that we have. So it scans the package e-built and metadata and looks for errors. It's really easy to use. You just change directory into the package's directory and run Repomend full, and it does its magic. Always use repomment commit when you make a change. Some people, especially if they're familiar with the git workflow, tend to use git commit. Although it's acceptable, it's better to use repomment commit because on, upon, when you run repomment commit before committing, repomment runs the checks, regenerates the manifest. That's also one of the things that people forget to regenerate and it causes problems. And if you have any QA issues, Git will not stop you, but Repomend will. And it will give you a nice template that follows the Gen2 commit message standards. It does not compile and test your package for you. You will still have to do it yourself. And it does not check the dependencies. There is some degree of checks for dependencies, but it cannot know whether you have the full dependencies for a package or not. And this is one of the outputs of Repomend full. Uh, this is just a dummy example, but it's, it's really fairly easy to read. So this package had one invalid use flag. It was missing a license. It, the digest, the manifest file wasn't generated properly, and the metadata was bad. So it's mostly self-descriptive, and if you have any problems, you can do man repo man. Uh, the useful links, we have the general proxy maintainers wiki. We try to put the technical documentation on the wiki even how to use Git if, you don't, if you're not familiar with Git, how to submit pull requests. We try to keep the documentation up to date. And the next one is Gen2 dev manual. Anything e-built development related, feel free to read the docs. And we have a GitHub guide. If you want to know how to use GitHub but you don't know, 
there is that. For contacting us, you can use the project email alias. There's also an IRC channel on Freenode, Gentoo Proxy Main. It's, I would say it's fairly active. If you have any questions, there will be developers and there will be users just like yourself who are willing to not only help you write e-bills, but they will test it for you as well. And there is also, like I mentioned, the public mailing list. The mailing list, unfortunately, does not show up on the Gentoo main web page yet, but the, there is the link to the archives. Any questions and comments? And thanks to Scarabus for putting up the template that I stole from him. I have a comment about uh, atomic get commits. Mm -hmm. While it is good to separate changes, um, uh, we have uh, we may have a drawback here. Our rules require that on any change uh, which affects live file system, revision must be bumped of the build. And uh, this way we can have a, a revision race. It mm -hmm. can uh, just grow up to dozens or hundreds. Because, for example, if we change we had a use flag, we need to um, make a revision bump, right? Mm -hmm. If we are updating in a script, uh, we need to make another revision bump. Mm -hmm. So sometimes uh, it is reasonable to combine these changes. In Using commit. merge commits? Or oh, I see what you mean, yes. OK. Um, the, the commit, the rules that apply to developers apply equally to users. And this requirement didn't actually come with Git. It's, a, it's the nature of VCS. Yes. Back in when we had CVS2, this rule applied, have atomic logical commits. So yes, the, the logical changes, that's why I said one logical change. The, the, the logical aspect of it that you, can, you may modify multiple places in an e-built file, but as long as they share a common logical change, a, a common purpose, you can multiply, you, you can modify multiple files. So the, the, the atomic part of it isn't the file, but the, the purpose of the change that you're trying to accomplish. Does that answer your question? Yes, Thanks. thank you. And uh, another comment, if I can. Uh, about testing u different use flag combinations. If mm. package has, for example, 10 use flags, it's obvious uh, this is not possible to test all combinations, at least uh, not without automation. So it should be um, reasonable to test uh, package with all flags disabled, all flags enabled, and some reasonable defaults, right? Yes. And uh, do we have uh, some uh, Tinderbox service for users who want to uh, to contribute via proxy maintenance? The proxy maintenance project does not have a Tinderbox that will test your packages for you, but one of our users, Toralf, runs a Tinderbox. Yeah. We have more users who has it, so... Yes, like Drops I said... And, and all the people, yes, so especially on the IRC, if you ask other users to help you out with a, a multiple use flags, they, they, ha they will happily test it for you. But like you mentioned, if there are 10 use flags, it's much harder. Any questions? More questions? More contributors, please? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's it's not really a question. I just want to say that I actually use this system to contribute on a number of packages, and I, I found it works really, really great, and people are helpful, so, yeah. Thank you very much. Good review. So, thank you. Thank you.